All right, Technivorous here, and today we are talking about speed. Now, the other day when we were talking about specs in the review, I told you that the Ender 3 claims speeds up to 180 millimeters per second. Now, this is the maximum speed, and you can actually get a decent printout at that speed, okay? So, this is 180 millimeters a second. This is 90 millimeters a second. They look pretty similar in quality. Both of them, uh, you can't see in the light, but they have a slight vibrational ringing because of the speed and the jerk that uh, you can see when you look a little closer. You can kind of see it here. See, it surrounds the letters and then stops at the top and bottom portions of the model. Um, and you can see if I turn them this way that they're relatively similar. You do get a slightly better print uh, of the top surface with a slower speed. This 90 millimeter per second right here is slightly smoother than this. I know it's hard to see with the light. I left the light on for a reason though, and the reason is because I'm going to show you this. Now when you're printing and you're going for dimensional accuracy, um, and this print looks good, it looks fine at 180 millimeters per second, but when I place it between my calipers, which are square, you can clearly see that the sides are bowed there. This this is a good example right here where it comes away from in the center. And pretty similar on this side as well. It's not quite square. When I slow it down to half that speed, I get a lot square edge. And I'm gonna try and clamp down on this since it is square. Um, and you can see that it is flush with that there. So dimensional accuracy being as important as it is when printing components or parts, uh, it's important to know that you can get a model that looks good from far away with these speeds, for sure, uh, depending on the filament. And I also have a Capricorn tube, which helps with increased speeds. But if you're going for a model that needs to fit together with another model or you need absolute accuracy, you're going to want to slow it down. Uh, again, you can see here how, let me turn it to the same side here, how this edge is fairly straight up and down and this one seems to bow inward like all the other edges. Um, it's very obvious right here at this angle. This one has a lot straighter edges. Now this is uh, double speed. And the speed is dependent upon different variables. So if I choose 180 millimeters for the max speed, it's printing my walls at a slower speed than my infill. So that is the max speed for the infill and a couple of the other settings that match it, not necessarily the walls. So the walls were printed at a speed that is more similar to each other because the ratio of the spread is less. But the infill... I was actually surprised with how well the infill came out in this one. I mean, it's a decent model. I was actually really, really surprised with this. I have run the speed test before, and it didn't come out nearly this good, but that was before I had the Capricorn tube. So um, I know it seems like I'm plugging them a lot here, but that, that really helps when printing with speed. Uh, it does max out at 180 millimeters per second, so even if you turn up the dial after that, it's not going to speed anything up. Uh, that is the top of its range as far as it'll go. Uh, if you're going to be doing like models to paint and stuff like that that have natural curves to them, you won't notice that warping as much. But if it needs to be square, you're definitely going to want to slow it down. As always, this channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. Alright guys, that's going to be the end of this video. As always, thank you. I'll put a video up right here that you can check out for more of our stuff. And if you're still here and you haven't already, why don't you click right here and subscribe to the channel.